Greetings from this little place I like to call heaven on earth. It's been a stressful week. It's actually been a stressful month. This COVID-19 pandemic has us in our homes and that's been stressful for a number of reasons. You may have noticed, cold sore. That's my body's indication that I'm stressed out. When I get stressed, I love to come to this place because it just seems like all my cares and concerns and worries and troubles, they just melt away. When I go for a walk, and I'm out in nature, you can't help but strengthen and deepen your relationship with God. After a few hours, you really feel the presence of God in your life. I think it's very important that we all have a place like that, that we can get away from it all and, and find that peace. We can't allow the stress to build up. We need to get away. We need that place where we can go and relax. When I think about this being heaven on earth, I have to think about what does the Bible say about me thinking that this is heaven on earth? I'd like us to look at 1 Corinthians 2.9. And I'm going to read it from my one of my favorite books, Steps to Christ. In this book, it's on page 86 of Steps to Christ. She has a lovely commentary that goes just before the very last sentence, which is 1 Corinthians 2.9. As your senses delight in the attractive loveliness of this earth, think of the world that is to come that shall never know the blight of sin and death, where the face of nature will no more wear the shadow of the curse. Let your imagination picture the home of the saved and remember that it will be more glorious than your brightest imaginations can portray. In the varied gifts of God in nature, we see but the faintest gleaming of his glory. It is written, I has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Can you imagine it? I mean, when I think that this little place is, is uh, heaven on earth with all its problems and all, all the bugs and the weeds and the, you know, all the things that are, that are you know, we're nowhere near. We got to think of this as heaven on earth times a gazillion. That's what heaven's going to be like. You know, the happiness and joy that I get while I'm up here, by the time I get home, maybe a day or two later, it's all gone. The stresses of this world have gotten me down and, and I'm, all the problems are bombarding me again. There they are. So again, it is important for us to Get rid of that stress once in a while. So I hope you're able to find a place that can do that. You know, it is good for us to reflect on heaven, to realize that there is a place that we are going to. This world is not our home. We are only passing through. And when we think about that, we know, I mean, if you study, we know what heaven is like. But you know, I know people that think, I don't know. I think heaven might be kind of boring. We're, they, they think we're going to be floating around on fluffy white clouds with white robes playing our harps. But you know, that's not it. That's not what heaven's going to be like. What does the Bible tell us heaven's going to be like? Let's look at Isaiah 65. I'm going to start with uh, 17 and then skip down to 21. Isaiah 65, 17, and then 21. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Well, we certainly know we need a new earth, don't we? Ours is falling apart. It's crazy. But look at what heaven's going to be like. This is amazing. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. We're going to want to be there. This, this kind of reminds me of what it was like when God created the earth in, in the brand new. And Adam and Eve were there and they had everything and, and it was glorious. Everything was perfect. 
that's what heaven's going to be like. And we're going to want to be there. That's for sure. You know, I was talking to my friend this week. I just called in to check up on her. She lives with her mother-in-law and she's a caregiver for her mother-in-law. When I talked to her, I asked her how she was doing. And through her tears, she told me, Barb, my mother-in-law is dying. Oh, no, I said. We talked about that for a little while. But when we were getting ready to close up our conversation, she says, Barb, I'm going to miss her. But we're at peace about this because we know she's going to be in heaven. That's right. We can know peace on earth right here and now because we can know that God has that place for us in heaven. And he's preparing a place for us. Let's look at, look, look at John. John 14, 1 through 3. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That is a place we're going to want to go to. Imagine that. Mansions. Mansions that Jesus is preparing for us. I don't know. It doesn't get any better than that. And let's go and look at Re Revelation 21, 4 and 5. Revelation 21, 4 and 5. What will it be like in heaven? It says, God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. And the former things have passed away. All the bad things that we can think of, they'll be gone. We won't remember them anymore. Then he sat on the throne and he said, Behold, I make all things new. We love new things. We know this earth needs to be renewed. And it will be. God's promises are right here in his Bible that heaven and earth will be made new. Well, we want our loved ones to be there, don't we? Yes, absolutely. We want our loved ones to be there. And we have to think, how easy is it to, to get into heaven? It's so easy. Look at this. Let's look at Romans 9. No, I'm sorry. Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's how easy it is. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and you will be saved. How can we tell them? How can we tell our loved ones about this? How can we reach them? I know we all have loved ones that we want to be with us forever in heaven. We have to tell them this. We have to share this good news with them. And I know I, for some reason we, it, we're scared or we don't want to be embarrassed or whatever our reasons are. They're there. They're real. We have to somehow get over them, don't we? You know, I've taken a lot of different Bible classes that teach us how to... Um, go out and talk to people about Jesus. And one of the things they often suggest is our, telling them our testimonies. You can't go wrong telling them our testimonies. What has it been like for you to be a Christian? And uh, what has being, uh, you know, what is the Christian life uh, been like for you? And what was it like before? What was it like now? And those are the kinds of things that we can share with our loved ones. Testimonies are a good way of sharing Jesus. But we also can do, we can tell them, talk to them in the way that Jesus talked to people. He talked through parables, right? I would like to wrap up our, my message here today with you with a parable. And I'd like to challenge you to come up with a parable that you could share with your loved ones. And next time I see you, please share that challenge, share that, that parable with me. Okay, my parable is 
you have a really good friend. You've known him a long time. And one day you're sitting there and you're talking with him and you're telling him all your problems. You're telling him you've got all these bills to pay and, and you've got no money to pay the bills. And, and problem after problem seems to be going on. Nothing seems to be going right. And you're wondering, when is this going to end? When can I, things just go right so that I can enjoy my life? And your friend, after listening to you, he says, I want to help you. You know what? I have so much money. I don't know what to do with it. I want to build you a beautiful house. I have some property. It's not too far from here. And I want to build you a big, beautiful home. No charge. You can come, quit your job, come on up, live with me and my family. And you know what? Bring your family with you. Bring your friends with you. My daughter, she's up there. She makes the most delicious breads and pastries. Ugh. And my son, he's there too. He makes the most amazing chocolates and ice creams. You've never seen such beauty. Yep, you can start your own garden. You'll have fruits and vegetables. Just come on up, all free. Come on up. What would you do with an offer like that? Would you ignore it? Would you just sit home by yourself and think, eh? Would you take him up on his offer? Well, I know what I'd do. I would quit my job. I'd go tell my family, my friends, and I'd say, come on, let's go. And off we would go. Well, you know what? We do have an offer like that. We have heaven. That's what heaven is. Heaven is awaiting for us. And we need to tell our friends and families about this. In Matthew, let's look at Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. What does the Bible tell us to do? The Bible tells us to therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. We're not doing this alone. God says he'll go with us. He'll be with us. He'll go with us, hand in hand. You can't do any better than that. Let's do that, friends. Let's pray for God's guidance. And God will use you in a mighty way to get this work done. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.